I'm one of the co-founders of Bbox. Um, I've been doing this, this role uh, for the last seven years and been working in this space for nearly the last 10 years, um, starting a charity back in 2008 uh, to start looking at this, this problem. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about uh, these three points that I've got on, on the slide here, um, tell you a little bit about where the off-grid solar market is right now, um, talk about some of the challenges and some of the opportunities and how, how we can grow this sector, and then potentially how some of you could get involved if you're interested in getting involved in this space. So just to talk a little bit more about the problem uh, in a broader sense, so there's approximately 1.2 billion people uh, who lack access to reliable electric power in the developing world, uh, in, in, the, in the world in general, and 53% of them are, are based in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, so it's over 600 million people who don't have access to electric power on the continent. This is a typical village that Bbox works in. Um, this is a very, very typical area. This was in, is in northern Rwanda, where we have a number of our customers. Um, and what's, what's interesting about those customers is actually that they're already spending a substantial amount of money on access to energy services, uh, often anywhere in the range of $6 to $14 a month on a variety of energy services, including kerosene for lighting, uh, charging mobile phones, uh, access to small batteries for, for torches, or, or candles for, for, for lighting purposes. And what we've seen also from the speakers this morning is that uh, one of the major drivers for access to energy in, in the developing world is around the growth of mobile phones. Uh, in particular, you'll notice that uh, a lot of these customers, even within this village here, already have a basic feature phone. Um, and one of the amazing things about that is that it's given them access to uh, banking services, and it's now giving them access to paying for products such as uh, the one we, we supply and develop, uh, on, a, on a monthly payment plan. So using mobile banking services, they're able to spend a substantially less amount of their monthly income on, on products such as the one we provide. So essentially the sales pitch locally for, for our, our customers is that you're already spending somewhere in the region of six to $14 a month on energy services. Uh, if you switch to one of our products, you're paying substantially less for that. You have a higher quality of energy within your home. It's available at the press of a button. You don't have to go and walk to go and buy your energy or charge your mobile phone. And so therefore, it improves the quality of your life and the amount of time that you're able to spend doing other more productive uh, activities. So that's, that's the concept that we have. In terms of how we've gone about delivering that, um, our products, I mentioned here that we we've, uh, have a concept of providing a virtual solar grid. Our products don't connect to each other, but they all connect back over the local mobile phone network. And we're able to send back a substantial quantity of data from these products in the field and understand in a lot of detail how our customers are using the product. We're also then able to offer much higher quality service to the, to the customer in terms of identifying if there's any problems or issues with their product in the field and then providing uh, access to technicians, locally trained technicians that we have within East Africa. So it gives you a sense of, of where our market exists and how Vbox is going about tackling that. In terms of how we've developed uh, over the last few years, we started off, in fact, when Bernie met us in 2013, we were very much on the left-hand side of this diagram, just designing and developing solutions for uh, energy service products um, for, for the developing world. And in the last four years, we've expanded the business into actually creating what we call energy service companies, so uh, DESCOs, as we call them, which are engaged in the actual operation and retail of, of these products in, in the local market. And currently, we employ about 500 people across this entire chain now, about 50 people on the technology platform business, and around 450 people in the Desco business. And we've, we've scaled the business um, in that method over the last few years. And in terms of the impact now, just in terms of the latest numbers, um, we've, we've now got over 120,000 solar home systems deployed across the developing world. The vast majority of those are in East Africa, and a large proportion of those are on our energy as a service program. Um, so this is where customers pay us on a monthly basis to get access to energy. And we've got actually quite a large uh, megawatt installed base, one of the largest um, installed bases of solar panels in the developing world in an off-grid method. Uh, and we have a number of different points there. And I mentioned around the, the data that we collect. We have this ability to gather and understand how the, the data can be used to improve products and provide a better level of service to our clients. Just to talk a little bit more about this, the market in general, I, I would also like to say that we've been a little bit lucky in terms of how the business has developed. We've been there at just the right time period in terms of a number of different areas. I've already touched on the boom of mobile money in the developing world, and particularly in East Africa. 
Uh, this has really allowed our customer base to pay easily and um, using an existing method for, for, mo uh, for, for allowing the payments to be made on a monthly basis. But also in terms of uh, the efficiency and price reductions in terms of solar panels and batteries, we've been there at just the right time. And this graph on the left shows it's on a grid scale system, but it would show uh, you've seen it had a, a massive drop in uh, the price of solar panels over the last few years, particularly since we started running this business in 2010. And that's been one of the major drivers that has allowed us to scale up to provide the products on a, a much more affordable payment plan to the customers because the overall cost has, has substantially reduced in the last five years. But this market still has a lot of challenges. We've made some progress, and, and other people in this sector have also made similar levels of progress in the last few years. But we still have a substantial market base, a substantial number of unelectrified people across the developing world. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the market challenges that, we've, that we, we see. I guess the first one of these is, is around access to finance. Uh, more, more broadly, global trends in, in, in access to finance and renewable energy systems have, have been increasing, again, dramatically in the last few years. Last year was a record year for our industry, where over $250 million was invested into off-grid solar companies. Um, and we expect that to increase again over the course of this year. So we are seeing substantial levels of investment into this sector, but we do need more of that. And just to give you a sense of that, um, if I look at it over the last 10 years or so, um, there's been around 23 billion invested into, uh, the, into um, the additional financing needs for decentralized energy access. But currently over the last 10 years, we're only seeing around f uh, $51 million. So there's a massive, massive gap between the amount of money that's needed to electrify the developing world versus the actual investment that's happening at the moment. So we have a large funding gap here. And the reality is that we need local banks, local financial institutions to start stepping up and, and filling this funding hole to allow the sector to, to continue to grow and develop. Uh, one of the other key challenges is around distribution. So the, the, the sad reality of our sector is that often access to, um, access to energy services, uh, there's, there's, there's often a, a, a quite a cross correlation between um, geopolitical instability and obviously the the, 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 the governments that are uh, in these sectors. So we see a quite a strong correlation here between areas of the world that have low le levels of electricity access and high levels of geopolitical instability. So that's a major barrier to our, to our market penetration. Um, there's only eight sub-Saharan African countries that currently have off-grid solar as a uh, renewable energy target. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a, a major issue for us as we scale up. We like to see more engage engagement from governments in terms of recognizing that this is a method of electrifying their populations and that you know, they should be looking at off-grid means as a, as a method of doing so. But it's not all doom and gloom. There are lots of good points to look at. Uh, one of the major things, as I mentioned previously, is around the advance of mobile payment systems. Uh, I've also got here the reduction in the, the price of, of batteries over the last few years. We see a massive trend in terms of cost reduction for these products. A large number of customers now have access to, to mobile banking services and can afford to pay uh, monthly for, for these products. Uh, and what we will see over the future is that um, what we'll see is, is that customers will start to want to move up what we call the energy ladder, or the sector calls the energy ladder. So starting to get access to more uh, productive sources of energy. So starting to, instead of just having energy for lighting, for phone charging, and for accessing inf infotainment services, we'll start to see uh, increasing levels of demand for more productive uses of energy. And also one of the major things that we'll see over the next few years is that as our customer base starts to move from feature phones to getting smartphones, that's already been mentioned, I think, in the first presentation this morning, we heard about the number of smartphones that we're going to see in the, de in the developing world. We'll start to see increasing levels of, of energy demand for those, for those units. So we'll start to see a large shift in, in customers' demand for energy, and we'll start to see that increasing quite substantially over the next few years. And, and we think, think that off-grid solar can play a large role in, in meeting this demand. So just to talk a little bit finally about the future and where we're going. So um, Bjork sees that off-grid solar has a, a complementary role to play. It's not going to electrify everybody in the developing world. Grid extension is going to do that for a large proportion of urban customers. Microgrids will probably do that for a large proportion of peri-urban customers. But we do think that solar home systems will have a large role to play for rural off-grid customers in the developing world. And that will help meet the UN sustainability target 
Goal number seven, uh, to get universal energy access to everybody by 2030. Um, to do that, we will need substantial levels of finance uh, to be able to reach that goal. And that's something that BBOX, along with its partners in the, in the off-grid solar space, have been working on over the last few years. So just to quickly wrap up for myself, um, you've seen that there's a rapidly growing market for off-grid solar. Five years ago, this sector didn't really exist. It only existed um, really in terms of donors giving away products to to, to customers, uh, to beneficiaries in, in the developing world. And we've seen that switch now to a much more uh, business-led model. We think that off-grid solar will be complementary to the grid. Uh, it won't solve everyone's energy targets, but it will have a, a vast impact on the off-grid community um, in the developing world. You've seen the, the technology that's uh, developing over the last few years, particularly in the reduction and the cost of, of solar panels and in batteries and the increase in mobile uh, payment systems has allowed this growth to happen quite substantially and as I said before BBOX and its partners have been have been there in terms of the, just the right time to, to, to ride that wave if you like. And the final couple of points there that finance remains a challenge for this sector and we still need to, to scale rapidly the amount of working capital that's available for this sector to, to access the number of people that need access to off-grid energy. And finally that distribution networks are key. That, uh, that often you have to go that hard mile, you have to put that shop in the local village, you have to be able to get into places such as, as this one in this picture here, really to access the end customer. And that's one of the key areas that BWOX is focusing on over the next few years. And how can you help? There's a number of different areas if you're interested in government policy in terms of how governments can support the growth of the off-grid sector. If you're interested in, in how technology can, can support that and how you could potentially get involved in, in the technology space in this sector. Or if you're interested in how local finance, um, particularly local banks or DFIs can get involved, please do come and speak to me about this uh, at the, uh, the end of the, the session. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening and look forward to taking any questions later.